Hello and welcome to another video of DAX Wednesdays. In today's video, we're going to have a look at two DAX functions called SUM and SUMX. Both these DAX functions belong to the aggregation family of DAX functions. Before we move on to the demo, I just want to explain the difference between these two DAX functions and their capabilities. On the left hand side, we have the SUM DAX function, which is pretty self explanatory. Sum is a aggregator function. In this case, what it will do, it will take a column name or column as one of its argument or parameters and it will make a sum of all the elements in it to give us a total. Whereas sum x is a tad different, and I will try to explain it to you in the following way. Whenever you see a DAX function which ends with x, for example, sum x product x, max x, average x. So these DAX functions are called as iterator functions. What does sum x do is first of all, it will take in two arguments, first one being the table and then the expression. As soon as we call upon the sum x DAX function, the x part of it, the x part of that sum x DAX function, first of all, will run through each row one by one. And depending on the expression, it will take a value, first of all, such as V1 from the first row, store it in memory, then move on to the next row. Depending on the, on the expression, it will take the next value, which is V2 and so on. And in the end, when we have all the values from each row of the table specified in the first argument, the sum component of the tax function takes charge and it will do something similar what the aggregator function does it will add all the values that are stored in, in the memory from our iterator component and give us a result. Now, one may ask, what is the difference between these two? Then the difference between these two is we'll have a look once we move on to the Power BI demo that especially what we can achieve with some alone, some X can do it as well. And not only that, it can do much more as shown in this graphic. So first of all, we're going to have a look at how to use the sum DAX function and what are its limitations later on. And then we'll switch to sum X DAX function examples where I will try to repeat the same result or get the same result that was achieved in the first example. And not only that, I will show you more examples just to explain the capabilities of the sum X DAX function. We'll only be covering few examples, not all, but you'll get the idea of the capability of sum X tax function once you see the demo. So let's switch to Power BI. Over here, we have a data set ready. You know, instead of using the same old boring data sets of total sales and the associated dates, you know, you can let your imagination run a bit wild. In this data set, what we have is I'm a big fan of the Star Trek franchise, especially the TV series. Some among you might have already seen it. So we had the original TV series back in the late 60s. Over here, the next generation, which was the late 80s and early 90s. And then we had several spin-offs such as Voyager and Deep Space Nine, all made by the visionary Gene Roddenberry. This is a fictitious data set and it has nothing to do with what might have happened in their production team. Just imagine that you are part of the production team working under Gene Roddenberry and you are supposed to provide what was the cost of, let's say, few of the cast members, the uniforms that they were wearing in the series. For example, in the original series, we had Captain Kirk who was wearing a gold uniform color and his designation was command and flight control. How many uniforms did we have back in the day in the 60s? their unit price and the total cost. So this is a fictitious data set in which you can have a look at the quantity, unit price and the total cost. So we have to use this data set for our demo. In the report view over here, I have created this table view in which we can have a look at the series name, the designation and the total cost. Now we're going to have a look at example of the sum DAX function. So Let's go back to table view. 
and put in a new measure and we're going to call this measure as total total sum like this some dax function which as we now know takes in just one argument so over here what we're going to do is select start direct total cost as the column name which is over here close the bracket say okay so you can see the major has been now added to our data model we go back to the report view and we'll add in our table this major that has appeared we click on it so as you can see at the bottom it has provided us with the sum of this total cost which is 3361 now if we were to go back to table view over here we can see that this is bit constructive we cannot do much with this dax function you know it just takes in one argument alone which is column name and that's it if we we can't do much more than this now we'll add the second major which is sum x since we want to show many examples we'll name this as sum x underscore one we'll type in the dax function sum x as now we know we have to put in the table name first the table name that we are using is star trek here and now i'm going to show you how we can recreate the same major that we had with this total sum so we have put in the table name we put in the comma and expression so the expression over here is nothing but we'll put in star trek total cost and close this bracket so as you can see since power bi has shown us no errors it means this measure is perfectly okay we'll switch back to report view and we'll click on the box in front of total sum x1 now an interesting thing has happened as you can see it has returned us the same value at the bottom which is 3361 but in this case it has done an iteration where it had saved 500 in its memory then moved on to the next row then it has saved 1050 in its memory and so on and in the end it has done a sum of all that which has returned as the same value that we can see with the sum dax function so this was with sum this was with sum x if you remember our graphic this is what we can achieve with sum and sum x but there's so much more that we can do with sum x let's put in another measure over here now there's one more way you we can have the total cost value that is if you multiply quantity by unit price now just imagine for some reasons you don't want to have the total cost column in your data model just to save some some to reduce the size of your data model and you just want to keep unit quantity and unit price so with sum x yes you can do that with sum x it will give you the total cost irrespective of the fact that this column exists in your data model or not i'll put in total sum x underscore two our second example happens or dax function sum x we'll choose the table name again star trek now this time around in the our expression instead of putting in the total cost column name as we did in total sum x1 we will have a product of these two columns quantity and unit price now this is the an advantage of the iterator function what it will do it will take row by row it will first go in this row of quantity and then multiply by the unit price of this row itself and then save it save that result in the memory save that value in the memory and once the sum component of or sum x kicks in it will aggregate all those values together so let's put in star trek quantity multiplied by star trek unit price so as i said if you multiply 3 by 20 where we'll get 60 60 will be stored in memory it will go to the next row 4 by 15 which is 60 again 60 will be stored in memory and once you are done with all the rows some component of the sum x dax function kicks in and it will aggregate all those values so there's nothing wrong with our dax function as you can see over here i will go back to report view and i'll add the total sum x2 in our table as you can see one more time it has given us it has also shown us what values it has in the memory for the first row and the second row which is quite obvious that we have 500 because we we had a product of the unit price and quantity 
and it has returned us 3361 so uh, once again good next up we will take this a bit further now just imagine on each of these uniforms we have some kind of discount okay we saw quantity and unit price just imagine we have some kind of discount and we need to include that discount in the total cost or should I say the cost before discount. In order to do that, we need to have a column over here where we can use the values of the discount. So I'll just click on the table first of all and then new column. Let's call this column discount and let's have random values between 2 and 10. So we'll choose this tax function called rand between which is you know random numbers between so we give a bottom value let's say 2 and a top value of let's say 10 we'll close this bracket so now tax this tax function has returned us these values which range from 2 to 10 now we'll put in our next measure which will be using this discount values let's put in total sum x underscore 3 is equal to sum x one more time we need to put in the table name start rec this time around what we're going to do is just imagine we take in this value of total cost which is 60 start rec total cost and we'll multiply this by let's say the percentage that remains after we remove discount so that will give us the final cost so i'll put in 100 minus start rec discount close bracket and divide it one more time by 100 so now what's happening over here is let's say it will take the 5 from this cell 100 minus 5 which is 95 divided by 100 that will give us 0.95 so once we multiply this by the total cost it will give us 0.95 of the total cost which is which includes the discount so our tax function seems okay or we also say it's the same thing that the function is fine but i'll add this measure in our table view now and as you can see over here what it has done now it has returned us the values which include the discount so let's imagine for command and flight control it has put in six percent of discount so this is up the value after discount and later on it has given us the sum of all those values which is 3120 which makes sense if we accumulate all the values after discount and compare it with the total cost which is perfectly fine now these were the examples but i'll show you one final example in which you can understand the capability of uh, sum x function total sum x under four now we were just manipulating the second parameter or the second argument of our sum x function which is the expression now the sum x DAX function will also let you manipulate the first part of the argument which is the table itself you don't need to uh, provide the same table every time you can also apply a filter to that table now just imagine in this filter i put in the table name which is start rec and in the filter expression what i will do is let's keep only the series all except the original one so what i'll do is Let's put in the filter expression where we have the Star Trek series is not equal to original. There is another DAX function called all expect, but for the understanding purposes, for demonstration purposes, I'll not share that with you right now. I'll just show you the filter expression in which the Star Trek series is not equal to original. So it will take everything except the original series. So this is our filter expression. And now we are moving on to the sum, the second argument of the sum x tax function. So this time around, let's put in one more time the total cost. All right, so we'll close this. So Power BI says, yes, this tax function seems fine. We'll go back to the report view and then add this sum x4. And now, as you can see, we see all the values except the original series, which is, this is a pretty cool feature. So it, so not only it, iterates or saves the value of each row in its memory it can also filter your selection this is such a cool feature in some x so i hope you got the gist of it of what are the capabilities of some as well as some x you can practice with them at your end 
let me know in the comments below what you thought about this video don't forget to like and subscribe i will see you in the next video